これ。Tips again, and I want to show you how I make a vortex. You can paint it, but if you're not in the mood for painting and you want something fun and creative and easy and fairly quick, and you're kind of in the beginner range and you just want something different, then this is the perfect project for you. And I wore a kind of like a swirly shirt. Plus, I'm going to go out to dinner in just a little bit, so I'm kind of gussied up. But anyway,、um, I wore this shirt. To represent sort of like the vortex look. I don't know, did I succeed?、Eh, who cares, right? So let's get to the tutorial. So, for this technique, I cut out little strips of foil, and it doesn't matter whether I use the shiny or dull side. I chose what base that I wanted, and I went ahead and made sort of like a little mini mold for my base. Keep in mind that when you do this, Keep the shape of your base inside the foil, as you can see here. You can use any bases that you want for this technique Fantasy, War Machine, even the really large size bases, too. Now, for the fun part get out the crayons. Pick out what colors you want for your vortex. In this case, I'm going to use green, dark green, and yellow for toxic. I will be doing lava and water, so stay tuned for that. Here are some dark blue and light blue that I chopped up, and I just put them side by side. I did the same for lava. I did red and orange, and I'm going to do just a dash of yellow. Time for the baking. You can use your regular oven, but I prefer to use my toaster oven. I put them all on a little cookie sheet, and I went ahead and put them in the oven. Not more than 300 degrees. I think the sweet spot that I've found is roughly about 270 to 280. For about three four minutes, and they melt really fast. Keep some toothpicks nearby. Be careful not to burn yourself. And while they're still hot liquid, is when you're going to take your toothpick and start to swirl the vortex look. And just keep going until you like it. You can make any design literally that you like the best. So, first I'm doing the toxic one, and then I'm going to show you the lava one. And then after I do the lava one, I'm gonna get another toothpick because you don't wanna mix your colors on your toothpick. And basically just swirl until I get the right vortex look that I'm looking for. When you're done creating the vortex look, you can let them set dry. They dry really fast, probably within just a few minutes. But I'm very impatient, so I just put them in the freezer, and in about 30 seconds, they're completely solid. Now, here it is, solid, right out of the foil. They're so easy to pop out. Be sure to check the bottoms because sometimes the bottoms look pretty cool too. And if there's any little flakes on the edges, you can of course take those off. Just get regular white glue and literally glue it to your base. Here's another water one that I did. It's actually very dark blue and white. Here are the blue ones. As water vortexes to compare. Now for the lava one. Here's the red one, all completely dried and solidified. The bottom didn't turn out that great, so I'm just going to feature the top of this one. I went ahead and cut it, and I added some glue and I sanded it. So I'm going to give this one a little bit different look to my base. Painted the sand black. And then I added a nice coat of Pledge Floor Shine with Future Shine, and it gives it a nice gloss. Nothing else seems to work as good as the Floor Shine. Here's the Toxic one that's the top and the bottom. You can add a little sand to the side of it if you want, give it a little bit of extra oomph. Here's a different one that I did, I didn't even swirl it. Here's another one, I didn't swirl that one either, just wanted to see what it looked like without it being swirled into a vortex. This one I added brown, yellow, and green. I chose one that I like, I cut it, and I'm going to glue it to my base and add some black metallic fabric paint. After the fabric paint dries overnight, sometimes it'll shrink a little bit, but you can just add another layer, no problem. It dries probably in a good hour or two, though. I went ahead and added super glue to the bottom of my Necron and I added him to the base. 
Now keep watching because in just a moment I'm going to show you another technique method that you can do with the crayons. For all those naysayers who think that the crayons are going to melt on your base for some reason if you leave them in your car, which I've tested, and here they all are. Um, but no, I haven't had anything melt or break or anything. They're pretty sturdy. Um, but I want to show you another method, and just in case you don't feel comfortable with this one, that you can add to the crayon to give it a little bit more, I guess, stability. It's called Sculpey Translucent Liquid Sculpey. It's basically liquid clay. And for short, it's called TLS. You just add some TLS to your crayons. I believe it's sold internationally. And you can go to their website, Sculpey.com. And this is what it turns out to be like. It's not as much of a vortex look, but it does give it like a nice toxic crater look. You can see the transparency. The Sculpey does dry clear in the oven and you only add just a couple more minutes to your bake time. You do the same method. This one has craters in the middle. I kind of cracked it a little bit so you can see through it. This is what it looks like when done with blues to give it sort of like a water crater effect. And it turned out really beautifully. Here's a lava one that I did. I did the same colors. I didn't mix them. I just added the TLS and now I'm adding rocks and a little bit of that fabric paint. Here are all the lava ones that I did. Different looks with just the crayon, one with TLS. Another method you can do is actually shaving the crayon and you mix it with the TLS if you don't want to just break it up, break up the crayon. So I'm adding the TLS and then I just basically got a toothpick and stirred it all up. I noticed that baking it for roughly about 10 minutes, maybe 15 max, is just about right at about 270 to 280 degrees. Depending on your altitude and where you're located and everything in your oven, you'll have to just kind of test it out. But that's what works for me and it worked for a couple other people too as well. This is what it turned out to look like. It gives it a little bit different look and almost like a toxic soup of some kind. It's kind of neat. The bottom even looks really neat too. I ended up liking the bottom much better. Here's a hot tip. Do not bake your bases even if it's at a low temperature. This is what will happen. I baked one to show you what not to do. I did put TLS on it. The TLS is fine. The base, not so much. You can take this technique a step further and add some little metal pieces. I'm adding some rocks. I added a metal screw and of course surrounded that with some TLS because I want the screw to look like it's half in, half out of the toxic soup junkyard. I then added some old watch parts which I used in my steampunk bases if you haven't already seen that video. And then I went ahead and baked them for about 10 minutes and I kept it under 300 degrees so none of the parts melted or anything. It was fine. They're just metal little pieces. This is what it looks like. So it kind of looks like it's floating in sort of like a toxic vortex soup. And this is with the crayon shaving look. This is what they all look like so you can see and compare. What's unique about TLS is you can actually mix it with other mediums such as pastels. You can just scrape off whatever, whatever color you're looking for. Or if you want to save a little bit of money, you can get some really cheap eyeshadow at your local drugstore. Um, for this demo, I'm going to be using dark blue and light blue shadows that I got for only 50 cents on sale at my drugstore. It's basically just mica powder. So don't be afraid, okay guys? And then I mixed in a little bit of TLS. And you can either create the shape with the powder itself or the pastels that you use or you can kind of mix it in all together which I do recommend that way it solidifies really well make sure to cover the entire bottom of the base this is what it looks like so again you can use any colors you want you can swirl them around to make it a vortex look using this method it's very durable it won't melt the stuff is incredible I love it Here's a hot tip. It actually comes out of the oven already dried, but it is very hot, so let it cool down for just a few minutes before you go ahead and take it out of the foil. Again, you can put it into the freezer if you want to speed up its dry time. Here's all the waters all together, the crayon, the one with TLS, 
the one with crayon and TLS, the one with TLS and the powder. I also did a couple mud ones to show you what they look like. I mixed brown and green with TLS of the powders and I also mixed just brown and TLS as you can see on the left there. So here's a hot tip. I recommend if you're going to be pinning your miniature for heavier minis like this using the method with TLS, the crayons with TLS. That way it has a little bit more strength and integrity to its base as opposed to just a smaller lightweight miniature like this one, you can get away with using just the crayon and a little bit of gloss on top. There's my hot tip. I'm gonna go have fun. You have fun doing the hobby, and I'll see you on the next tutorial real soon, guys. Bye.